In this video, we'll be breaking down the process of translation. So let's give ourselves a little bit of context. Before we get to translation, the cell will have gone through the process of transcription, which allows a cell to make an RNA copy of the coding strand of a gene found in DNA in the nucleus. In eukaryotes, that messenger RNA will then be transported out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm of the cell, where it will be read to create a polypeptide, which is a string of amino acids. This polypeptide will then fold into a protein. Now to complete the process of translation, we need three different types of molecules. The messenger RNA, which is a single-stranded RNA version of the coding strand of a gene. It contains the codon sequence that will be translated into a polypeptide sequence. Translation also requires many transfer RNA molecules, also called tRNA. The structure of a transfer RNA molecule is extremely important to its function. While it's still a single-stranded RNA molecule, it takes on a clover-like shape because it has segments of complementary nucleotides that interact with each other to create the shape. On one end of the tRNA molecule, you'll find an amino acid attached. On the opposite end, you'll find the tRNA's anticodon. This is a series of three nucleotides that will interact with a complementary codon on the mRNA. In this process, the codon that is complementary to that anticodon corresponds to the amino acid carried on that tRNA. A ribosome is the final component of this process. It facilitates the interaction between the anticodon of the transfer RNA with each codon of the messenger RNA. It also facilitates the transfer of the amino acid from the tRNA molecule onto the growing polypeptide chain. The ribosome has two subunits, the large and the small subunit, which attach to the mRNA independently, but then work together to facilitate the interaction between mRNA and tRNA. The ribosome contains three internal sites for tRNA. The first site is the A site, where tRNA enters the ribosome and binds complementary to the mRNA. The second site is the P site, in which an amino acid from the tRNA molecule is transferred onto the growing polypeptide chain. And the E site is where tRNA that has already delivered its amino acid is ejected from the ribosomal complex. So let's break down the process of translation. After an mRNA molecule has been created and has entered the cytoplasm of the cell, the small subunit of a ribosome will then bind to it and scan along the molecule until it finds the start codon, AUG. After it finds this start codon, the large subunit of the ribosome will attach to the complex, aligning the AUG codon in its P site location. Then, a tRNA molecule with the anticodon complementary to the start codon will come into the P site and hydrogen bond to that codon. Notice that the amino acid attached to this tRNA molecule is methionine, which on the codon chart, you can see is coded for by the AUG start codon. Then, a tRNA molecule will enter the A site of the ribosome where its anticodon will interact with the codon aligned with this site. From this point, the ribosome will move along the mRNA molecule, moving the first tRNA molecule into its E site and the second tRNA molecule into its P site, leaving the new mRNA codon in the A site open for hydrogen bonding of another complementary tRNA molecule. During this transition, the amino acid from the first tRNA molecule is transferred onto the amino acid that is still attached to the second tRNA molecule. The tRNA molecule that now does not have an attached amino acid is then ejected from the ribosome, detaching from the messenger RNA and moving back into the cytoplasm, where it will eventually attach to a new amino acid and be av available for translation once again. 
At this point, the process simply continues. A new tRNA molecule will come in in hydrogen bond complementary to the codon in the A site. This tRNA molecule will then be moved into the P site. In this move, the tRNA that was occupying the P site will be moved into the E site. As it's moving, it will transfer its polypeptide chain onto the incoming amino acid. In this way, the P site continuously holds a growing polypeptide chain as the ribosome moves along the mRNA molecule one codon at a time. Eventually, the ribosome will run into a stop codon. In this case, you see the stop codon aligned with the A site of the ribosome, while the P site contains the tRNA molecule attached to the entire polypeptide chain made in the process of translation. At this point, instead of a tRNA entering the A site and interacting with the stop codon, a protein called a release factor enters the site and interacts with the stop codon. This interaction causes the two ribosomal subunits to detach from each other and the mRNA. The tRNA will then also detach from the polypeptide chain. This polypeptide chain will go on to potentially be modified and then folded into a protein. It folds based on the specific sequence of its amino acids, which as we could tell in this video, is 100% based on the sequence of codons that was in the mRNA strand. And that's the process of translation. If you want to review how that mRNA strand was created in transcription, you can watch my video on transcription. If you're interested in learning more about the genetic code, please see my video on codons and amino acids. And if you're interested in how DNA mutations can alter a polypeptide and protein structure, you can check out my video on mutations as well.